Here's something you don't see very often, especially in a dumpster, but this that's where this one ended up. I don't know if it malfunctioned or the batteries are bad or what, but um, this might be an interesting teardown. I have some experience with defibrillators, but not, not this type of defibrillator, but I know some of the older ones that I'm familiar with had some really neat vacuum relays in them. And uh, <clears throat> basically they charge up a big capacitor and then uh, you've all seen in the movies they take the paddles and then they push the buttons and uh, they discharge the capacitor through the person's chest and try to convert them into a more life-sustaining rhythm. Which, and fortunately in real life, doesn't happen like on TV. But anyway, back to the uh, AED. I'm going to tear it apart and we'll see what we find inside. Stand by. This is my first experience in looking at one of these. It's kind of interesting. They come all pre-connected. They got the patches and everything inside of a package. They can give you a little scissors. And evidently, you've got on the front, it kind of tells you what to do here. The thing is powered by 10 lithium cells. Duracell Ultras. And they were all bad. Nice little battery holders. Like some kind of a reset. Anyway, I guess we'll uh, open it up and see if we'll find some goodies that can be used to make some neat stuff. I'm hoping for some kind of a vacuum relay, but uh, I don't think I'll find one in here. They probably use a big FET to, uh, to discharge the cap into the waiting victim here. 14 screws later and the uh, unit is open. I didn't bother showing you uh, unscrewing the uh, the cage here. You see a lot of these videos and they show you unscrewing the screws and it can, you know they make a, a 10 or 15 minute video into an hour. But who wants to see that if you don't know how to use a screwdriver I guess. <laughs> Anyway, here's the here's the guy you want to watch here. I get it out with one hand. This is probably a huge electrolytic capacitor, which I'm sure it is. 115 microfarad at 2300 volts. Holy cow. Yeah. This high voltage charge stored in this capacitor is lethal. And it may be retained for a long time. Yep, that's for sure. But, um... Well, I'm used to working with big capacitors. Here's a nice capacitor. Phillips. 2400 microfarads at 450 volts. Anyway, I will still short this out before I... It's well insulated. And my uh, hope of getting a vacuum relay, of course, is not going to happen. As I suspected, they're dumping the charge with... Um, well, I'm not sure. Here's some kind of a big device here. There's two of them. I'll have to check and see what the what they're at. Um, here's a small relay. Yeah, not much in here that's really of any value. But... Um, Anyway, I'll pull the board out, I'll discharge the cap, make sure it's discharged, and we'll see what we got. Well, I made sure this was discharged. I measured across at zero volts, so we're okay to mess with it. But always remember, 
ready kilowatt is not your friend. And if you don't believe me, take it from someone who knows. Danger, Danger Will Robinson. Danger, Danger Will Robinson. Here's the large capacitor that's charged up and um, is dumped into the uh, the leads that go to the patient. I know in the older units we used to use, they would develop up to 360 joules of energy. I don't know what this one's rated at. You can calculate it from the capacitance and the voltage. If you take one of these apart, be extra careful because at this amount of energy, if you're not in uh, ventricular fibrillation, if you get on the wrong end of this thing, you soon will be. So heed the warning. Well, this board does have some uh, useful components on it. These components here, these are SCRs. They're 16 amp, 1000 volt SCRs. And there's 17 of them on this thing. On the back. It's also got some 4 and 35 opto isolators. I got tons of those. They're not really worth salvaging. But what's interesting is here, right here, are two IGBTs, insulated gate bipolar transistors, and they're rated at 1200 volts at 24 amps. So um, they will be useful for something. And here's a little, looks like a little current transformer. It's got a wire going through it. Here's a relay. Nine volts and it'll switch 10 amps at 250 volts or 10 amps at 30 volts DC. 250 volts AC or 3 volts, 30 volts DC. So, it does have a few useful parts on it. I'll find useful parts on just about anything. Even if you get a line cord or, or something like that, it's, it's worth it. A lot of this other stuff is just basically scrap. Well-made board, though. This would be a good one to practice removing and uh, soldering surface mount parts if you're learning to uh, use surface mount. Here's the battery holder board that I just removed. I'll keep this. I'm going to remove all of the the battery holders. They hold these little lithium 3 volt lithium, lithium cells and um, this might come in handy for something. You know, one of the best sources for parts is uh, old electronics, especially commercial or industrial. You get some, you can get some circuit boards with really good parts in them. This uh, this might not be that useful. Um, 2300 volts, 115 microfarads, but it might be useful in um, a project I've thought of. Uh, a, an electric fence and my ongoing battle against raccoons. So this might be coming handy. There's a lot of energy in here. I'll test this and see if it's any good. Anyway, that's it for the teardown. I don't usually do teardowns, but this one was kind of different and interesting. I thought somebody might be uh, interested in it. So keep your eye open for surplus electronics. Lots of goodies out there. Especially if you know somebody that knows where there's good dumpsters. Anyway, that's it for this one. Catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.